All right, so this is the question. This is the question. And um, it says we, we have to um, evaluate the functions that have been given here, the trigonometrical functions. And then the answers that be, the answers that we're supposed to find here are all supposed to be in these given domains. Yeah, I mean the given ranges. So all the answers are supposed to be in these uh, ranges. Yeah, depending with the trig function that we've been given. So for sine for sine inverse of x, we have to get the answers in this um, range. For cos inverse of x, um, the answer is supposed to be in this range. And then for tan inverse of x, the answer is supposed to be there. So we can start with the first one there. Let me use the white uh, marker. All right, so as you have seen here, um, the first one is uh, simply sine inverse of the root of three over two. So sine inverse of the root of three over two is a um, symbol. We know this to be, um, yeah, so we know this uh, from the, yeah, from the table of values or from the table of special angles. From the table of special angles, we know this to be uh, 60 degrees yeah so in radians we can convert this by just multiplying it with pi and then dividing it by 180 and this is simply just 1 over 3 pi in radians so now if this is the now if this is the answer if this is the answer you have to check if it's in this um we have to check if it's in this uh, range that we have uh, been given there. Now, one thing that I want you to understand is this, even, even after being given this, or I mean, even after finding this uh, answer on the screen, the most important thing you have to consider is the sign of um, the sign that is in the bracket. So if you check the sign there that we have is positive. So when we talk about sign, when it says sine inverse of that, um, since this is a positive, we have to consider the quadrants. Yeah, so considering the quadrants is important because uh, you don't know what your lecturer wants. This is also one of the answers. I'm not saying this is not uh, the final answer, but this is also one of our, one of our answers. But we also need to check if we have the solution of uh, sine in, in, in other quadrants, because this, this answer that we've found is only in the first quadrant. So we know to say all positive three ratios are in the, uh, are, I mean, they also have solutions in the first quadrant. And then in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan. And then in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So after finding that, after finding this, uh, this will be considered to be what? to be our reference angle. So I'm, I'm just going to consider this as my reference angle. So now, uh, what do I do with this angle? So I have to check which quadrant, in which quadrant is sine uh, positive. So if you check the first quadrant, we have sine, I mean, all trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Hence, we take, um, we take our first quadrant as one of our solutions. So in the first quadrant, you just get the reference angle as the answer. So you say in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, uh, the value of um, sine inverse of what? The root of three over two is what? Is equal to this same one over three pi. And then the other quadrant in which sine is positive is the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, uh, we know to say you always have to subtract the reference angle from 180. And then 180 in radians is simply just equal to what? Pi. So this is just the same as uh, saying we're going to subtract the reference angle from pi. 
So the other quadrant in which sine is positive is the second quadrant. So we can also say in the second quadrant, the second quadrant, uh, sine inverse of the root of three over two is simply just equal to what? In the second quadrant, it's equal to, um, in the second quadrant, it's equal to, uh, this will be pi minus one over three pi. So if this is the answer that we've gotten, if this is the answer that we've gotten, we can, I mean, let's subtract to get the final answer. So when you subtract there, we're getting what? Two pi over, uh, two pi over three. So now we have to check if uh, this is in this given domain. So that, uh, I mean, in the given range. So the range that we've been given, uh, they told us to say, this is supposed to be, um, I mean, the solution for sine inverse is supposed to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So in degrees, pi over two is simply just the same as 180 over two and 180 over two is 90. So that uh, range is just the same as, or it can also be written as um, negative 90 uh, to what? To 90. So this is the, uh, the, the, what is the range for sine inverse. So we have to check if uh, 60, remember one over three pi, we said it's also what? It's also 60 degrees in degrees, yeah. And then we can also convert this one by dividing, by multiplying it, uh, by multiplying two over three uh, with 180 because we said pi is equal to 180. So when you put 180 there and multiply it with two over three, uh, we simply get 120. So this can also be written as 120 what? degrees. So we have to check if we said this one is a 60 degrees. So we have to check the, the range that we've been given, which solution lies in this range. So we can see that 60 is between 90 and uh, is between negative 90 and 90. So this one qualifies to be one of our solutions, but 120 degrees is not between negative 90 and 90. So this one is not one of our solutions. So we remove this part. So the final answer can there, I mean, the final answer is therefore the sine inverse of what? Of the root of three over two is simply equal to uh, 60 degrees. Or in radians, you can write it as one over three pi. Yeah, so this is the solution that they wanted us to find on the first question. Do we have any questions before we proceed to the second part? Okay, so let's quickly move on to the second part. So the second part, we have uh, B, and then B, let me use white. They're saying tan inverse of negative the root of three. So one thing you have to understand is that when you're dealing with quadrants, you can first say, um, let, uh, so I'm going to say let phi be equal to, so this phi I'm writing here is going to be my reference angle. So I'm going to say let phi be equal to what? Um, let phi be equal to, uh, let phi be equal to um, tan inverse of what? The positive root of three. So there are actually two ways in which you can solve these uh, uh, trig functions. Yeah, so this one I'm using is the simplest because it's the one that you already know. Yeah, so there's also another one where you just consider the negative in front there and say, um, okay, let me just teach you the one that I'm teaching you right now because if I start introducing another formula, it might end up confusing you. So after doing this, you make sure that what is in the brackets there is positive. And then when you find the reference angle, so the reference angle will be phi is equal to, uh, tan inverse of the root of three, this one is 60 degrees. In radians, this can be written as what? Um, one over, uh, yeah, one over three pi. That is in radians. So, yeah, so this is how you write this in radians. So this is the solution. This is a reference angle. It's not the final solution. So we can now, um, 
We can now check the quadrants. So we know that we have four quadrants. In the first quadrant, all trig ratios which are positive are found there. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. In the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So we're trying to check the quadrant in which uh, tan is what is negative because when you look at the question, we have a negative inside there. So we check the quadrant in which tan is negative. So tan is positive. Um, in the third quadrant and in the first quadrant, meaning it will be negative in the second and in the third, I mean, in the fourth. So in the second quadrant, so in the second quadrant, in the second quadrant, we take our value of, um, so in the second quadrant, we take our value of um, uh, theta or the value of tan, tan inverse of negative root three as what? So we'll take the solution for this as um, uh, we say pi minus what? Pi minus the reference angle. So we say pi minus the reference angle is simply just um, one over three pi. So one that we found here. So one over three pi. So when you subtract this, you're going to get uh, two over three pi. So this one qualifies to be one of our solutions because when you check the range, um, or well, let's check for tan, where is tan? Okay, tan, yeah, for tan inverse, uh, it's not one of our solutions because tan, the, the, what's this, the range for tan has been given from negative pi over two to pi over two. So we can't get this as one of our solutions. So this one is not one of our solutions. I was looking at this the time I said it's one of our solutions. So this is not one of our solutions. Let's quickly look at um, the third, I mean the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, so in the fourth quadrant, yeah, so in the fourth quadrant, we know to say, in the fourth quadrant, you have to say 360, which is just the same as two pi, minus the reference angle, which is one over three pi. So when you do the subtraction there, you're going to get um, five over three, um, five over three pi. So five over three pi is simply just the same as, um, is it 300? Yeah, 300 degrees. And when you check this one, it's just the same as from negative 90. When you check the range that has been given, from negative 90 degrees uh, to what? To 90 degrees. So considering this range, we we'll say this is not, this is also not part of our solutions. So when you check the solutions of this, according to the range that has been given, the final answer should just be no solutions. Yeah, the final answer should be no solution. So unless uh, you want to use the other method, where you say, because um, we know to say tan inverse of uh, the negative number, tan inverse of um, tan inverse of a negative number is simply just a negative, uh, the negative of that answer. Let me tell, let me show you this one. Let me, but this is the correct um, this is the correct format which you are supposed to follow. But if they want you to apply the rules of time, because we know to say uh, sine sine of sine of uh, a negative number gives you a negative number, and then cos will still remain a positive. Okay, what I'm trying to say is this: if they want you to follow these uh, formulas. There is this. Um, there are these simple formulas. When you say sine, sine, sine x, sine negative x is equal to negative sine x. And then there's also this one for cos, cos negative x. This one is just equal to cos x. And then for tan, tan negative x is just the same as negative tan x. Yeah, so if these are the formulas they wanted you to apply here, then 
it's easier for you to find the solutions. But again, the reason why I'm applying that other method is because we've been given the ranges. So having been given the ranges, uh, I think these do not make sense. We can't use this unless the ranges were not given. If they are not given, this would have been, um, we would have resorted to using this. So that for this one, the answer becomes negative uh, 60. This one, the answer becomes uh, just 60. Then this one becomes um, also 60. Then this one becomes um, 45. That is if the ranges were not given. But since the ranges have been given, we have to follow those uh, steps to check in all the quadrants if we have any angle that is qualifying. Yeah, so that's it. I don't know if you have any questions or we should solve another question here before we proceed to the next question. Because what, what I think is these questions are simple, provided you just um, identify the quadrants where they are found. I want to ask here. Uh, so, do you, um, is there any question where you have sign sign inverse of negative x? Sign inverse of negative x. Sign inverse of negative x will still give you. Um, if they say sign inverse of what? Uh, negative, negative x. x. Yeah, sign inverse of negative x. Um, yeah, sine inverse of negative x, this should be just the same as negative sine inverse of x. Then try to, to, to test that on the calculator. Sine inverse of uh, negative x. Okay, let me just go and research on, that, on this one and then we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll come and explain it in the next session before we begin. But I think it has to give you something like this. Because let's say if you take sine inverse of what? 0 0.5, huh? Sine inverse of uh, negative 0 0.5. So sine inverse of negative 0 0.5. Let me just get the calculator to prove. So negative 0 0.5. OK, yeah. So this statement I've written here is correct. So sine inverse of negative x will still give you negative sine inverse of x. It's just the same. Yeah, so this one is correct. So if you've been given that question, it's easier for you to do. You can easily just follow that same uh, way you've uh, solved it. That is if the range has not been given. But if the range has been given, it means that you have to also check other quadrants if there are also other solutions in other quadrants. Okay, so let's quickly move on. Uh, 